Hello guys, welcome back. So uh, previously we've been talking about HTML links, CSS and other attributes of HTML. Let's move on further. In this session, we're going to talk about images. How do we insert images in a web page? Now that's obviously one of the most interesting aspect of HTML. It allows us to control how we insert and use images within our web pages. And it's obviously one of the most fundamentally important thing. And it's very easy to do. As always, uh, we need a tag, okay? And the tag is basically IMG. So you need to use IMG tag to insert an image or any image in your, at any point in your web page. The way it works is that you use an IMG tag, then you need to provide the source attribute, okay? The source attribute basically contains the path of your file that you want to display. That's it. That's all it needs, okay? And if I click on try it yourself, Here's our image. We have a heading that contains the text and then IMG source picture truly.jpg. Now, assumingly, this picture resides within the same folder as my current file has been saved. So, this is an HTML file. It has been saved in a particular folder. You use the same uh, folder and say, uh, you save the image at the exactly same location. Then just write the image name, okay, with extension. Okay, so make sure you do understand the extensions of your files. If there are JPG, PNG, GIF, or web, WP, uh, WBBG, okay, web page as it, we call it. So that's all we basically need to do. Um, certain ad additional metadata we can provide uh, if you want to control the aspects of this image, such as alternative text, uh, which is truly, so that basically means that if somehow image is not loaded or cannot be found, a text will be displayed on that particular image. This alternative text is also used by search engines to find what this image is about. So whenever we do image search, basically uh, this alternative text allows us to, you know, document that what is this image type and search engines technically look for this thing here to understand what exactly we want. Okay, so it's always important to write a description or a description means in one or two words, three words, uh, define what your image is about so the search engines can easily find it. Then obviously uh, self-explanatory width and height of your image in terms of pixels. So this is like 500 pixels and this is 33 pixels in terms of its height and width. Okay, so this is how we insert an image. The other key important aspect of this image tag is that it has no closing tag. This is one of those rare tags within HTML like BR, like HR. It image also has no closing tag. It is just there because it's just going to display the image and the image is coming from this SRC path. Okay. So it does not require or does not need and it does not have an image closing tag. So do keep this thing in mind. So we basically provide an alternative text, which is in other words, if this is an image, I don't know what this image is about, but providing this alternative text allows me to understand how there's a girl in a jacket. So if I click on try it yourself, you're looking at the image, I can assume that, ah, okay, this is here. So if somebody's searching online, basically Google search engines or other search engines will use this alternative text to find out information about that particular image. So um, how image syntax works, again, it uses this image tag. It basically, it's an empty, it contains attributes only. There is no closing tag for this image. That's all that you need to understand, okay? Then within this image, basically two basic attributes that we specify are source, which are the source of your URL. And then the alternate is basically the description about your image. Now, again, this is not an important, uh, this is not mandatory in other words, but it's recommended that you use this alternative text every time you want. Okay. So this SRC attribute requires the path of your image. Okay, by the path means that wherever you have saved your image, you provide that path to this image. So SRC path name, okay, and then alternative text. So alternative text attribute, again, if we talk about this now, it requires attributes provide an alternative text for an image. Basically meaning that if your image cannot be loaded for any reason, the text will be displayed. So that's one as one use of this alternative text. So if path name is corrupt or something, it will show me this alternative text. Second, it also uses, uh, it's also used by search engines. So this is one thing that we do. So every time you need to insert an image, that's all it needs to take. So we write an image tag, wherever in my text, I want to image and insert, uh, insert an image, simply write an image tag, SRC, image name, in, within inverted quotations. That's all it takes. Alternative text describing the image, we can use the style attribute. Now, we have talked about style in terms of CSS. Again, this is inline CSS. Means that within inline, I've provided the CSS and using CSS, I can control the width and height of this image. Remember, there is a width and height attribute of HTML as well. You can use that as well. So it basically becomes exactly same. Depends on what you want to do. <coughs> in the long run, we always recommend, hey, let's use the style. CSS allows us to control more aspects of an image. 
So we prefer, if you're using CSS, then preferably you would find that you would be controlling the size of an image using CSS alone, okay? So similarly, uh, if I move the width and height in terms of attributes, we can use width, height attributes as well. So you have a width attribute, we have a height attribute, or you can do the same using the CSS style as well, okay? This is what it's all talking about. So you can use the width of an you know, um, image, height of an image, in terms of pixels, we define it, or we can use the CSS as well, okay? And we use this as simply as it goes. Then uh, images in another folder. Now, this is again important thing. Usually what happens when you build a large website, there are hundreds of images. So you don't want to keep all images in one single folder where your HTML files are. So it's always recommended to create a duplicate, um, another folder structure and put the files in these images folder. So we segregate our folder names. Okay, so the way it works is that, for example, within your project folder where you have saved your HTML, okay, uh, if I click on this image, uh, if you have saved your image for images, um, if you have saved your web page in a folder, and in, inside that folder, you create another folder called images, and then put all your images uh, related to your project within that folder. So how do we access it? We use backslash images, backslash html.gif. So this basically means that I have a folder Within my folder, I have created another folder called images, and within that, I have my image file. So this is what we give, give in terms of path name, okay? So you can save your images in a separate folder. Make sure you give a correct path. If you want to use an image on a server, you can do that as well, okay? So for example, if you come here, and you would see that this time we are using an image that's located on a server. And for that, we need to provide an absolute path of that file which is on a server. So you can use images from uh, iStock or uh, PixArt or any other uh, website that has a URL publicly shareable. You can use that image URL directly and it will fetch the image from that particular server location. Okay, so it's sometimes we do that. Some There are many websites that provide images that you can directly use without even downloading and you can use them from the server directly. Just remember that you need to do uh, provide an absolute path for that particular image. You can use animated GIFs as well. Uh, again, animations is quite important and is quite commonly used on websites, meaning that any GIF images that have certain animation in it, all you need to do is just use the GIF image. It's the same code. So image tag, SRC, you just provide the GIF. If the GIF has animation, it will automatically be rendered as an animation on our browser, as simple as that. Okay, so you can see this inserting image is absolutely easy peasy. It's very simple and very easy task as long as you use the image tag. You don't have to worry about any other thing within your game. You can make your image as a hyperlink as well. We have talked about this in last session in links as well. So for example, if I have an image, I can make this as a link. So when I click on it, it loads a particular website. How do we do that? We use an anchor tag. We provide hreference default ASP or the name of the file that we want to load. Then we come here and we provide image tag. So within image tag, we provide SRC file name, alternative text, a style if you want to do that. Now, because the image tag has been placed between the anchor tags from starting to closing times, this will now be considered as a link. So the image becomes a hyperlink. So instead of text, we can use an image or icon or GIF or button or anything you want as a link itself. <coughs> it's a cool way of designing your web pages. Okay. And then so on and so forth. So this basically allows us to understand uh, what images are and how we use images. So every time you need an image, just use an image tag. The five formats that are basically supported by image are uh, APNG, GIF, ICON, JPG, PNG, SVG. You can use all of these image files. Okay. So I hope you understand how we use that. It's very simple and very easy to use images. And we can set these images quite uh, conventionally within our websites. Okay. So uh, thank you. And, show, and hopefully see you in next session now.